Now, don't miss this moment right here. Because Jesus is doing something really, really big in this moment. Jesus is redefining holiness. Jesus is redefining holiness. In the past, the Pharisees defined holiness by what you are separate from. Separation from sinners was holiness, according to them. But Jesus challenges them and helps us to see that integration with sinners is holiness. He's redefining it. He's saying, listen to me, guys. I've come here for the sick because I'm a doctor. I've got a message. I've got new life for them. I've got healing and power. That's where I need to be, and that's what holiness is. And then he gives them those fighting words. Now go learn what this means. <laughs> These are some of the most learned and educated people around. He said, go learn what this means. And he gives them a verse they'd be really familiar with. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. In other words, God's saying, it's not your religion that I'm concerned about, your cleanliness. I'm really a lot more concerned about your heart, and especially your heart towards broken people like this. Jesus says, that's why I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus is unfolding a whole new paradigm that religious people are oftentimes uncomfortable with. And whether you're talking about ancient Israel or even the church today, there's this thought pattern, this idea pattern that has pervaded religious people about new people integrating into their midst. And usually the order of integration goes something like this. Believe, behave, belong. And the idea behind it is if you believe the right thing, so before you come and be a part of our group, we need you to, in the Christian circle, believe that Jesus really is the Son of God who died on the cross to pay for your sins and rose from your de the dead in order to uh, bring new life. And then once you believe that, it'll start changing your life and you change your behavior patterns so you fit in with us socially. And then once your behavior patterns are good enough, then you can be welcome into our religious club. And you can be a part of who we are and what we do. Jesus is changing all of this in a moment. Jesus is saying the whole order of this is different. By going to the party, Jesus says, belong is first. By inviting a tax collector to be an insider on his discipleship team, he's saying the first thing that happens is that people belong in the group, on the inside. Jesus walks right up to that tax collector booth and says, come to the inner circle, belong. And it's when you belong on the inner circle that you get a good view of Jesus. It's very hard to discover Jesus if you can't be a part of a community of people who love and honor and study his life. So then the second thing is that you would believe on Jesus. And then the last thing is that your life would change. And that really is the order that it happens. It's crazy sometimes, I think, that Christians expect non-Christians to behave in moral ways that line up with our beliefs when they don't have our beliefs. We need to start at the right place and help people to see Jesus and allow the behaviors to follow on later. It really cracks me up, the idea that sometimes some people have who are outside of the family of God as well. It's the idea that I'm not going to come to Jesus, I'm not going to believe until I get behaved down. In other words, I'm not going to trust him or get baptized until I get my act together first. Now that's a lot like saying, I'm not going to get a maid until my house is really clean. Or I'm not getting a coach until I'm really good at my sport. Or I'm not going to the grocery store until I'm done being hungry. You want to invite Jesus into your life. You don't think, I'll beat my addiction, I'll straighten out my relationships, I'll conquer my problems, and then I'll invite the greatest spiritual force ever into my life to help me with it. Duh. Get the power first. You'll never be cleaned up enough for Jesus. He's your spiritual Clorox. He does the work for you inside. And then once Jesus is on the inside of your life, Jesus says, start reaching across the aisle just like I did to the sick, to the sinners, to the people who need mercy. Join my team and go. Get your friends close to Jesus. Mix it up. You get close to the one who needs him and then you allow Jesus' love to drip all over him.